Me. Me. Great tape talk that was uh, taken off of Mr. Odin Lloyd. My apologies. Um, it was a great tape talk that was taken off of Mr. Odin Lloyd. And is that in substantially the same uh, condition as it was when you photographed it that night? Yes, sir. Move to admit your honor. Okay. A box in next exhibit. Trooper Brian Ng did. Um, with regards to the dark, the areas of the dark stains, you see the holes within those areas? I do, sir. And were those holes there that night? They were. Did you just point those up to the truth. There's one here on the side, two here, there's one up here, one further up, and one along the collar, I believe, but I can't really tell from this photo. Yes. Yes, sir. Right at the collar. May I approach again? Three photographs asking directors what those are. Photographs of uh, the body of Mr. Odin Roy. And what part of the body are those three photographs um, The upper half of his body, the front um, chest, and uh, lower abdomen, I would say, side. Second photograph? Second photograph. Um, right on his, uh, I believe, right shoulder, right under his chin. And the last one. I believe that is the side from this photo. Do those three photos fairly and accurately depict what Mr. Wood's body looked like that night? Yes, sir. I'm going to admit those three in the series, Your Honor. Okay. And that is the next exhibit. Photo of the first one's a photo of uh, Mr. Nolan Lloyd's uh, right arm. Is that inside of his arm? Next one is um, a closer um, of that photo. Next photo is of the outside of his arm. And uh, the next photo is uh, further away, seeing more of the body, but you can see his, his right arm on the outside of his right arm. Who to admit these as a series, Your Honor? No objection. We might the next exhibit. Thank you. 
Um, it's a picture of uh, Mr. Odenwood's back, um, the lower part of his back, and this is the upper part of his back with three holes in his back, and a further away, so it's a close-up and a further away photo uh, of uh, Mr. Odenwood's back. To admit those as well. No objection. Mark, it's the next exhibit. photo of Mr. Ornwood's um, upper body. Um, you can see um, holes in his chest and uh, it's on his uh, left his left arm uh, with his bagged hand. Starting by his neck and moving uh, further down his body. If you just point those out one by one and I'll try to One up by his neck, one up in the right chest, one in the left chest, one you can see is cut off, but it's see in the lower part of the um, right side. And um, you can't see on the arm, but it's, I believe, right around here is the other one. Um, and with regards to the, the wounds in his chest, as you peeled away the clothing, were those wounds consistent with the clothing? Uh, yes, sir. And what manner were they consistent with the clothing? In the same uh, area of the, um, where the clothes would be on the body. What was in the same area of the clothing? Uh, the holes of the holes in the clothing uh, match up with the holes in his body. <coughs> show you 202B. Ask if you recognize what that is. Uh, yes, this is upper, upper part of Mr. Odom Lloyd's body, right under his chin on his right side. Um, you can see a hole in the skin. to see further down is the wood's body. Further down on his side. Right here. <coughs> Show you what's been marked two oh three two oh three A. This is a photo of Mr. Odenwine's right arm, uh, his bagged hand, and the inside of his arm. Uh, what is the purpose of leaving the bag on at that stage in the photograph? And that's for when the, the doctors um, do the autopsy, they actually take um, clippings of the nails uh, to get any evidence that might be on the hands or underneath the um, fingernails. Did you ever take a photograph of his hands that day? I did not. They, they do that at autopsy. I didn't want to remove the bagging. Two o three B. The other side of a, a closer um, shot of his arm with a um, hole in his arm. Two o three C. This is the outside of the same arm. 
with a, uh, a hole on the other side of his arm. Two hundred three D. It's a just a further away shot where you can see where um, on the body that that hole is on his arm. Right here. Show you two hundred four C. That is. Shot of Mr. Odom Lloyd's back, um, middle of his back. There, there's three holes on his back, starting up by his neck, here, 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 and then you can see one on his lower back, on the left side of his body, here. Two hundred four B. It's a closer shot of the same wounds on the upper part of his middle back. So I'm from the top by his neck here, here, and here as well. Final 204A. That's on his lower back. There's a, a hole here. With regards to the clothing that was removed from Mr. Boyd's body, were the wounds um, on his back consistent with the holes in the clothing? Yes, sir. Ma'am, when you um, had finished removing the clothing and had the two gel uh, trace evidence gel things. Did you? What did you do with those? Um, they were packaged and sealed in Limsden and um, transferred to the evidence locker. Who did that? Um, myself and Trooper Brian Ng. Were you present for when they were logged in? Yes. I'm more than a moment, you're on. <clears throat> Good morning, Trooper Sullivan. Good morning, sir. Uh, did you uh, tell us that you responded to the medical examiner's office in Boston uh, at around midnight? That's correct, sir. Okay. Uh, and do you know whether Mr. Lloyd's body had been transported directly from uh, North Attleboro, mm -hmm. where it was found, to the Boston medical examiner's office, or whether it went some somewhere else first? It should have come directly, as far as I know, directly to the OCME's office. They go straight from the crime scene to the OCME's office. So in OCME, that's the office of the chief medical examiner? Yes, sir. In Boston? Yes. So as far as you know, uh, Mr. Lloyd's body was transported from the scene where it was found in North Attleboro to Boston that, that evening? As far as I know, yes, sir. Okay. And you did your work before the autopsy was conducted, right? Correct. Do you have any idea whether the autopsy was conducted in Boston or whether Mr. Lloyd's body was moved somewhere else to conduct the autopsy? It was not conducted in Boston. Okay. And the, the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner in Boston uh, is equipped to do autopsies, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So do you have any, uh, where was the autopsy done, if you know? Uh, I don't know which office it was um, okay. performed. Do you have any knowledge as to why Mr. Lloyd's body would have been moved from the office of the chief medical examiner in Boston, where you did your work, somewhere else to do uh, the autopsy, ma'am? Okay. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Tim. Thank you. Thank you. 
great persuasive. Please follow me. Please face the clerk and raise your right hand. Sir, you solemnly swear that the testimony about to give to this court and this jury will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Thank you. Have a seat, sir. My name is Daniel Tom, T-H-O-M. <clears throat> and where do you work, sir? I work for the Massachusetts State Police, currently assigned out of the District Attorney's Office. A new Bethany. rank? A sergeant. How long have you been a sergeant? For just over a year. Uh, in uh, June of 2013, were you a rank trooper at that yes, time? Yes, I was. And uh, as a part of the investigation to the death of Owen Lord, were you called to go to an autopsy? Yes. Where was that? That was in the uh, office of the chief medical examiners uh, down in Sandwich, Massachusetts. Um, about what time and on what day was that? On uh, the June 19th, which was a Wednesday, at approximately uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, what, if any, active role did you have in the autopsy? Basically, I made documentations of uh, who, who was present uh, and observations of the autopsy as it was being performed. And who was there? Uh, Dr. William Zane uh, performed the autopsy. Uh, Colleen Alvarez is the uh, technician who assisted him. Uh, Trooper Bill Tarbokas was from Crime Scene Services, and he photographically documented the autopsy. And uh, were you there throughout the autopsy? Yes, I was. Um, with regards to the autopsy, uh, were certain items collected from the body of Odin Lloyd? Yes. What were those items? Uh, there were, uh, the uh, blood was taken. Uh, there were uh, right nail clippings, uh, right hand nail clippings, left hand nail clippings, uh, pubic hair, and uh, facial hair. Were those items um, kept separate from each other in that list that you just gave us? Yes. Um, and uh, who collected those items in particular? Uh, Colleen Alvarez. And, um, and what was the manner in which she collected uh, the blood? Uh, she took it out uh, with a, a needle and put it in a test tube. Did you see what happened to that test tube? Uh, yes. It was a purple top test tube, and uh, from there it was secured. Um, when you say it was secured, who took it? Uh, she wrote it down in an evidence form, a uh, uh, transfer of evidence, and it went to me. The other items uh, involved at the autopsy, the fingernail clippings, were the right hand and the left hand kept separate from each other? Yes. And who took those? I did. Um, how were they uh, secured? Uh, separately in envelopes, I believe. Um, the pubic hair sample, how was that secured? Separately. And who took that? I did. Um, and the head hair sample, or excuse me, facial hair sample? Yes, separately, and I took that as well. What did you do with those items? Uh, I took them and transported them to the uh, State Police Crime Lab uh, in Lakeville. And um, what was done with them there in your presence? I handed them to uh, a chemist, uh, Sherry Menendez, and uh, we documented the uh, transaction, so to speak. May I approach her? Sergeant, I'll show you this photograph and ask if you recognize what it is a photograph of. Yes, I do. What is it? That's the blood. Um, and how do you know that that is the blood that we've been talking about? Uh, it is, uh, has the uh, test tube and it uh, has the cap and it's got the item number on it. Move to admit this, Your Honor. Okay. Move back to next exhibit. Uh, 
the yellow tag. It's the uh, case number from the uh, ME's office. Yeah. Correct. And within that, and within also, that. I'm sorry, up on the top, there is also a, a white tag from our office, which has our case number, and it explains that it's a, a purple top tube from the Massachusetts State Police. I show you these two photographs. Ask if you recognize what those are. I do. And what are those? They're uh, rulers. <laughs> uh, above the rulers, do you see something? Okay. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, you see on the right, they appear to be nail clippings. On the left, nail clippings. And do you recognize these with regards to this particular case? Yes. And how do you do that? Uh, by uh, noticing the case number, uh, and uh, that's it. Okay. Move to admit these, Your Honor. Neighbor Mackett's next exhibit. fingernail clippings in the right hand. And uh, did you secure those, take those to the left? I did. With regards to 206B, what are those? Uh, the left hand nail clippings. Did Try you it. secure those, take those to the left? I did. Thank you very much, sir. No questions, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Your Honor, our next witness we'd like to call Jessica Robido, please.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. State your full name, please. Jessica Robidoux. And could you spell your last name? R-O-B-I-D-O-U-X. Okay. And do you work, ma'am? Yes, I do. Where do you work? For the Massachusetts State Police at the Crime Lab. How long have you worked at the Crime Lab? Eight and a half years. How are you currently assigned? I currently work in the South Region Lab in Lakeville. And how long uh, or what unit are you assigned to? Right now I am assigned to two different units that I work in simultaneously, the Crime Scene Response Unit and the Criminalistics Unit. Could you tell us a little bit about your duties in the Crime Scene Response Unit? My duties in the Crime Scene Response Unit are to respond to crime scenes or scenes that may be related to crimes. I document crime scenes using um, note-taking and sketches and diagrams. I perform chemical testing. Um, I collect and preserve evidence. I bring evidence back to the crime lab where I submit it into evidence, and I prepare written reports of my findings. Okay. And what about with regards to your other duties in the criminalistic unit? When I'm working in the criminalistics unit, I'm assigned um, cases to work on. Um, part of my duties include reviewing all of the evidence that may be submitted in cases, um, to have meetings with investigators and district attorney's offices to decide which um, items of evidence should be examined. I also examine physical evidence inside of the laboratory using photo documentation, note taking. Um, I perform testing for biological fluids such as blood, semen, and saliva. Um, I examine trace materials such as hairs, fibers, and gunshot residues. Um, I collect samples, um, which I can forward along to other units within the crime laboratory, such as the DNA unit, the bomb and arson unit, the trace analysis unit. Um, and I also prepare written reports of my findings. And how long have you been in the crime scene response unit? Um, approximately seven and a half years. And what about the criminalistics uh, unit? Um, the same amount of time. Okay. And what uh, uh, training um, and uh, experience have you had to collect and examine these types of things that you've just described? When I first entered the crime scene response unit and criminalistics unit, um, my training began with reading um, scientific literature and journal articles. Um, I received lectures and PowerPoint presentations from um, fully trained chemists within my unit and my supervisors. Um, I took practical examinations. Um, I took written and oral tests in all of the different areas of my expertise. Um, and I took a final comprehensive exam before I was allowed to um, work independently on my own at crime scenes and in the laboratory. Okay. And when you took that uh, comprehensive exam, the results of that were? I passed. Okay. Now, approximately how many scenes have you been to? My goodness. Um, um, more than 350, less than 400, somewhere in that range. Would that be part of your crime scene response um, duties? Yes. Okay. Um, with regard to other, when I say scenes, do you, uh, have you ever participated in, in uh, the execution of a search warrant? Yes, many. Okay. Now, I'd like to direct your attention back to June of 2013. Did you have an occasion to participate in a, the execution of a search warrant in North Attleboro? Yes. And do you recall what date you participated in that? June 22nd of 2013. Now, at some point in that date, uh, had you received a phone call? Yes. And as a result of that, uh, where did you go? I was called and asked to respond to the North Attleboro Police, De uh, Police Department. And did you respond to the station? Yes, I did. And when you arrived at the station, did you meet with other individuals, uh, law enforcement or other people that you recognized? Yes. And who else um, did you meet with? Um, there were many people present. There were representatives from the North Attleboro Police Department. Um, there were also representatives from the Massachusetts State Police um, District Attorney's Office uh, Detective Unit assigned to Bristol County. Um, there was also a representative from the Massachusetts State Police Crime Scene Services Section, as well as myself um, and my supervisor, Daniel Pratt, from the Crime Scene Response Unit. Okay. 
And as a result of meeting there with these other folks, did you have conversations uh, with them, just yes or no? Yes. And as a result of that, were there certain, uh, did you understand or did you then ultimately leave from the police station to go somewhere else in North Attleboro? Yes, I did. And where did you go? I responded to 22 Ronald C. Meyer Drive in North Attleboro. Okay. And approximately, if you remember, what time did you respond to that location? Uh, approximately 1.45 p.m. And when you went there, were there certain, as a result of conversations you had, were there certain items that you were looking for? Yes. And what items were you looking for? I was looking for um, items that may potentially have blood evidence or gunshot residue evidence, in particular um, certain colors of clothing and sneakers. Okay. And at that time, just describe um, the clothing uh, that, uh, that you were interested in or that you were advised uh, to be looking for. I was interested in the following clothing items. Um, a white or light colored um, hooded sweatshirt, uh, dark colored jeans, and white Nike sneakers. Okay. Now, with regard to uh, those items, before you actually went to 22 Ronald C. Meyer, had you been shown any um, a picture of something? Yes. And just describe um, th this picture. Um, do you know if it was black and white or color? I don't recall. Okay. Just the quality of the picture, could you describe that? Um, it was a very grainy photo of Mr. Aaron Hernandez um, wearing what appeared to be a light-colored shirt, dark-colored pants, and white sneakers. Okay. And so as a result of seeing that photograph, uh, did that cause you to look for those items at the home? Yes. And how long would you um, say that you remained at the home? Uh, I believe it was just shy of four hours. And did you notice uh, when you arrived there, uh, did you see any occupants of the home? Yes. And who did you see? Uh, Mr. Hernandez and several other people were present in the home. Okay. And you say Mr. Hernandez, do you see him in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Could you just point him out and describe what he's wearing, please, mm -hmm. ma'am? The man with the purple colored tie. Thank you, Your Honor. Threat could reflect the witness identifying the defendant. Now, just tell us, when you responded on this date and at that time, what, um, where did you start? Where did you go? The first area of the house that I focused on was um, an office area on the first floor of the home. And when you say the office area, was that, uh, what level was that on? The first floor of the home, sir. And do you know uh, how you entered the home? Through what door? I'm sorry, sir. I don't recall if I entered through the garage or the front door. Okay. But at some point in the, that area of the office, um, uh, did you go to a closet area? I did, yes. And just describe what you saw in the closet area. Um, to the best of my memory, the closet was mostly empty. The shelves were mostly empty except for um, uh, a towel that was on the closet shelf. Okay. With regard to, uh, do you recall at some point going to a closet that had a no articles of clothing and shoes? Oh, yes. Uh, there was another closet um, off of a hallway. Um, it was a hall closet, however, it um, contained many pairs of shoes. Um, the whole wall of the shelf was lined with shoes. And at some point, did you begin to um, uh, examine any of these items? Yes. How many of them did you examine? Um, I would say I glanced briefly at all of them um, and then focused on ones that appeared to be white. Um, I pulled two of the pairs of white Nike sneakers off of the shelves. Um, we were interested in the sneakers because there were red-brown colored stains which appeared to be blood stains on the sneakers. Okay. Now, as a result of that, were they white sneakers? Yes, sir, they were. And when you, uh, these uh, areas of red-brown stain, did you do anything after you had now recovered these items? I did perform testing for the presence of blood on those stains. Okay, and just describe that testing. How do you go about um, testing for blood? Uh, the test that I use is called the orthotolidine test for the presence of blood. Um, it is a screening test only, not a confirmatory test, because there are things other than blood which can test positive. Um, it is a two-step chemical reaction test. Um, 
I apply the chemicals to a filter paper which has touched the stains in question. Um, if a bright blue color um, results after I add the chemicals, this would be considered a positive reaction. And did you perform that test on those uh, two pairs of sneakers that you described finding in that closet? Yes, sir, I did. And just tell this jury, uh, what was the result of that test? The result was negative. Um, the testing for the presence of blood was negative on the stains on both pairs of white Nike sneakers from that closet. Okay. As a result of uh, the negative testing, what did you do with those sneakers? Um, the sneakers were collected by myself and brought back to the crime laboratory at a later time where they were submitted into evidence. Okay. Now later on, did you continue um, in, the, uh, in the course of your search to look for uh, other white sneakers? Yes. And where else did you look? On the second floor of the home, um, the master bedroom had a large closet inside of it. Um, this closet also contained many pairs of shoes. Um, two pairs of white Nike shoes uh, were found inside of, inside of this closet, and I did retain those shoes and bring back those shoes to the crime lab where I submitted them as evidence. Okay. And as a result of um, searching for shoes in total, how many pairs of white shoes did you recover from uh, the home of the defendant? Four. Okay. Now, after you had um, uh, searched for shoes, at some point did you look for what you described as a white uh, sweatshirt? Yes. Uh, and just actually, before I... Ma'am, I'm just going to show you the previous event for Mark 155A. I ask you to recognize the item um, depicted in this photograph. Yes. Okay, what do you recognize that to be? A pair of white Nike sneakers. How do you recognize this? There are markings on the sneakers um, identifying the analyst, the item number, the identifying case number, and the date of the exam. Placing a 155C on the overhead, you recognize what's depicted in this program. They are a pair of white Nike sneakers. And uh, you recognize those? Again, I recognize um, the initials, the identifying case number, um, item number, and the date of the exam. Showing you now 155D. Recognize uh, this shoe? Yes. Or these pair of shoes, okay. And what do you recognize it to be? A pair of white Nike sneakers. Again, does that have similar uh, markings? Yes. Lastly, 155G. Yes. And all of these, these four pairs of shoes, you recognize the items that you have recovered from the home? Yes, sir. Now, ma'am, you indicated that you were uh, looking as well for a sweatshirt, a white sweatshirt. Yes, sir. And at any time during the course of your search, did you locate a white um, sweatshirt? Yes, I did. And can you tell us where you saw a white sweatshirt? In the laundry room on the second floor of the home. ask you if you recognize it? Yes, I do. What do you recognize that to be? A photograph of the white hooded uh, pullover shirt that I collected from the laundry room. Your Honor, um, I could offer you something else. Is it? No objection. Max Smith's exhibit. Sure, Thank you, Mr. 
questions on that? And I'm placing uh, what's now marked 07. Recognize that as the item that you saw in the laundry room? Yes, I do. And just describe, if you would, that um, shirt. It was a white colored shirt similar to a hooded sweatshirt, however, it was a lighter <coughs> material, a shirt material rather than heavy sweatshirt material. And was that long or short sleeve? Uh, long sleeve. Did it have any tag on it? Just that one that you're zooming in on now on the bottom of the shirt. What about in the area of the left um, uh, breast this area? No, sir. I'm showing you what was previously marked Exhibit 153A. Do you recognize that as the same item? Yes. So I show that tag area down in the lower right corner. So, uh, can you see the tag area in the lower right corner? Yes, I can. Okay. And does this show, show that you have a hood? Yes, it does. And 153C. Is that just a closer up of that uh, tag area? Is that a close up? Yes, it is, sir. if you recognize it. Yes. And what do you recognize it to be? The white hooded pullover shirt from the laundry room. In, in this pocket area here, do you notice any emblems? I do not. Ma'am, um, any other white sweatshirts recovered? No, sir. At some point, did you um, find your way to the basement? Yes, sir. And can you tell us what area is the basement that you went into? Um, I was in many different areas in the basement, um, including a bedroom area. When you say a bedroom, can you describe where that was located in relation to other rooms? I'm sorry, sir. I don't recall the entire layout of the basement. There were several areas. There was a gym area. There was a bathroom. There was a media or TV room. I don't recall where the bedroom was in relation to the other rooms. Okay. When you went into the bedroom area, um, did you notice anything about the uh, condition of it when you were Yes, there? I did. And just describe what uh, condition was it in when you went in there? It appeared to have already been searched by the law enfor enforcement personnel that were present. Okay, and just describe what you saw that made you think that. The mattress had been flipped up off of the box spring and was resting against the wall. Okay. Now, with regard to this mattress, um, do you recall how the mattress was positioned in the room? Um, the head of the bed, if I remember correctly, was near the door to get into the room. And just in terms of when you say the mattress had been um, uh, flipped, um, in which direction had it been flipped? The head of the mattress was still in alignment with the head of the bed frame and the foot of the mattress was still in alignment with the foot of the bed. It had just been turned up on its side and was resting against the wall. Okay. And that wall, do you recall there being windows behind the, that wall? No, sir, I do not. Okay. And 
when that mattress was in that condition of being flipped up, did you make any observations of the underside of the mattress and the box spring? Yes, sir, I did. And just describe, what did you note when you looked in those areas? I noted that the underside of the mattress had um, several dents in the actual fabric um, that formed a, what appeared to be a pattern or an impression in the fabric itself. And as a result of noting that, um, were any photographs taken? Yes, sir. Your Honor, if I could approach. Ma'am, I'm just going to show you these five photographs, ask you if you recognize them. Do you recognize those, ma'am? Yes, sir, I do. And what do you recognize them to be? Photographs of the uh, bed in the basement bedroom of the house. And does that show the mattress in the position when you observed it in that bedroom? Yes, it does. No, I'm going to offer these. No, no objection. Max, it's the next exhibit. Against the wall. And the headboard here, uh, as you described it, was up against what? A wall. And the door that you described, where was that? Uh, the... Can you see it in this photograph? Oh, I'm sorry, you pointed over in this area here. I recall that's where the door was. Okay. Now, at some point, um, let me just show you the next photograph. In Mark 208B. Did you see, um, when you said you saw some impressions, uh, can you just point to where you saw them on this? Let me just back this out. Is in this, this area here? You're indicating in this area here? Yes, sir. Okay, let me try and zoom in for you. Here is here. Yes, sir. Show you two o eight C. Does that show that area, ma'am, of uh, the impressions that you saw yes. on the underside of this mattress? Is that a close-up? 
that's true over E. You can just reverse this photograph. Is that a close-up of um, some of the impressions you observed? Yes. And that ruler, uh, does that show a ruler? Yes, it does. And was that distance measured? Yes. And approximately what distance were between those two points? Six inches. And this area, um, you see this area over here? Yes, sir. Is that one of the impressions as well? Yes, sir. back to 208D. Again, where is the headboard in this photograph? Headboard is right here. I'm sorry. Right here. You're indicating over here? Okay. So if we were standing at the foot of the bed, where is the right side of the bed? If you were standing at the, the foot of the bed, looking, foot of at the the bed looking at the headboard, this would be your right side. This would be the right side here. Yes, sir. Now, ma'am, did you notice anything in the area of the box spring? Yes, sir. Okay, what did you notice? Um, there appeared to be uh, several disruptions or, or dents or impressions in the box spring as well. And do you see that in this photograph? Yes, sir, I do. Ma'am, after you were in the, the basement area, did you go to another location in the home? Yes, I did. Where did you go? The garage. Okay. And when you went out to the garage, is it fair to say your attention was directed to a, um, a black duffel bag? Yes. And were there certain items of clothing that you inspected there? Yes. And just tell us about the items of clo clothing, ma'am. I inventoried the items inside of the black duffel bag. Um, it was a black track suit, uh, a black jacket with matching black pants, a black t-shirt. There were also some ace bandages as well as a box that was wrapped with a, wrapped in gold with a wristwatch inside. And where you had located uh, or observed this uh, black duffel bag, did you see a, uh, another type of bag like a plastic bag? Yes. And what color was that? White. And were there any items in that? Yes. And did you find an article of clothing in that? Yes, I did. And what article of clothing was that? A dark paired color of jeans um, and a pair of socks. And as a result of making observations of the pair of um, jeans in the white plastic bag, in the um, sweatpants, in the, in the black bag, did you recover those items? Yes, I did. series of photographs, ask you if you recognize them. Do you recognize those names? I do. What do you recognize those to be? Um, the dark colored pair of jeans from the white bag and the black uh, sweatpants from the duffel bag. You know, there are three photos of each. Yes. No, 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 please. The next. No, definitely. You marked its next exhibits.
The white plastic bag. B, you recognize this item? Yes. Is this uh, shown? The interior side of the um, dark colored jeans from the white plastic bag. C, is that show? Another photo of the same pair of jeans. Two ten A. The black uh, track pants from the black duffel bag. Two ten B. Another photo of the same pair of black pants. And lastly. And another photo of the same black pants. And these items, were they recovered? Yes, sir, they were. And after they were recovered, uh, what did you do with them? I brought them back to the crime lab in Lakeville where I submitted them into evidence. Now, earlier, I think, uh, a few minutes ago, I asked you about the underside of that mattress. And you made certain observations that you've described. Yes, sir. Did you do something with that area? I took a scalpel and I cut the fabric from the underside of the mattress. Okay. And then was that item then taken with you? Yes, sir. Yes, I do. And how do you recognize this? That's my handwriting on the bag. Okay, is this the bag that you then, once recovered, um, secured it in? Yes. Just um, if you'd like to put in the gloves, please. Ma'am, I'd ask you to just inspect, if you would, the contents of this bag. Do you recognize this item? Yes, I do. What do you recognize it to be? The uh, white piece of fabric that I cut with a scalpel from the underside of the mattress. And is that uh, in substantially the same condition as when you cut that? Um, other than the fact that it's creased from being folded, yes. Okay. And does that show the impressions that you observed on the, um, on the day of June 22, 2013, when you were participating in that execution of the search warrant? Yes, sir. And, Your Honor, if I could, I'd like to have this marked and then have the witness be able to show this to the jury. Okay. Marked as the next exhibit. If you would, wouldn't mind just, um, if you could hand me the bag, and I'm just going to have you hold on to that for a second. step down and publish this to the jury. Ma'am, if you would. I would just ask you to step in front so everybody can see. If you would hold up that material, and if you could hold it up high so everyone could see that, 
and if possible, could you point? Um, okay. Can you point to the area of the impression that you observed? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, if you would just turn that so that they can. It's visible on the back side. Bump there. Sorry, I can't hear. Yeah, just you keep your voice up, please. This bump here and this bump here. Okay. And if you could just turn it around, make sure that everyone has a view of that. And I marked the location of the, where it says head here. That was the direction of the head of the mattress. And the purpose of uh, marking that in that way was what? To be able to orientate, uh, orientate it after it had been cut out. Okay. And does that indicate then that it's um, a location or proximity from where the um, where you observe these items? It does not. Just has an arrow pointing to where the head of the mattress would have been. Okay. And does that show the tape? Uh, that we uh, place on there for the purpose of measurements. Yes, this is the same tape that was visible in the photograph that you showed me. Okay. Yeah. Can you just turn it this way so we can see them? Okay, thank you, ma'am. I'm just going to ask you if you would. Thank you, ma'am. That's all the questions I have. Good afternoon. So you work for the Mass State Police Crime Lab, right? Yes. But you're not a police officer, you're a civilian, is that correct? That's correct, sir. Okay. And on June 22nd, 2013, you were part of a group of people who were executing a search warrant at Aaron Hernandez's home in North Attleboro, right? Yes. Okay. And you told us that you were there for around four hours? Yes. And you went all over the house? Yes. And you were looking for uh, uh, items of evidentiary value, is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. And you told us that uh, one of the places you went was uh, an office uh, on the first floor, right? The main floor? Yes. Okay. And you saw a white towel uh, in a closet there, right? Yes. But you didn't take that white towel with you, right? No, I did not. Okay. And am I correct that the reason you didn't take that white towel with you is because the white towel you saw in Mr. Hernandez's uh, home that day in that office, uh, that, was, uh, that was not, it looked different than uh, a white towel that had been found uh, near the body of Odin Lloyd, right? I believe that's fair to say. Okay. And since it looked like a different kind of towel, it didn't seem to you uh, to have evidentiary value. I never saw the towel um, that was beside the body of Odin Lloyd, so I couldn't actually make that determination. Well, you did a report after you... Um, uh, participated in this search, right? Yes. And that's your practice to document what you do, is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. I'll show you a copy of your of, uh, document. Uh, is that your uh, is that your report? 
Yes, it is, sir. Okay. And uh, in your report, uh, you make reference, do you not, uh, to that towel? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. And uh, is it fair to say that the towel, that is the towel at Mr. Hernandez's home, was determined to be inconsistent with uh, a towel previously collected uh, at the scene uh, uh, near Mr. Lloyd's body. Is that right? I'm sorry, sir. What was the question? The question was, was a determination made either by you or by your colleagues that the towel in that <coughs> you found in Mr. Hernandez's home was inconsistent uh, or different, a different kind of towel than the towel that was found near the body of Odin Lloyd? Yes, sir. Okay. And since it was a different kind of towel, a determination was made either by you or by your colleagues that this towel uh, in Mr. Hernandez's home didn't appear to be of any evidentiary value and therefore didn't need to be taken. Is that fair to say, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay. And you were asked, you told us that during the course of this search, uh, you collected uh, four pairs of uh, Nike sneakers, right? Yes, sir. And uh, you, were, you were shown photographs of those sneakers a few minutes ago, right? Yes, sir. And I think when you were shown the photographs, you were explaining to the members of the jury what some of the, some of the markings on the photographs meant, right? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> So, for example, 155A, uh, uh, that was, uh, that's one of the pair of shoes, Oops, that's not good at all, that you collected on uh, June 22nd of uh, 2013, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And in this area, I think you told us, down here on this part of the shoe, uh, there's uh, someone's, uh, there are some initials and some numbers. Can you see them or not? Yes, sir, I can see them. Okay, good. Uh, and uh, the initials you told us are the initials of the person who analyzed uh, these particular, this particular item, these shoes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And then uh, there's some kind of an item number next to that? Yes, sir. Okay. And under the item number, uh, where I'm pointing with my pen, uh, you see uh, a date. I do, sir. And uh, the way, based on the way your crime lab works, uh, would that be the date that the analysis was performed? If an analysis occurs on an item over the course of several days, the date would be one of the dates of the analysis. All right, so it might be the first date, it uh, might be the date in between, or it might be the final date? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, uh, what is the date on these particular shoes, the date of analysis? 11 25 14. Okay, November 25th, uh, 2014, right? Yes, sir. That was more than 17 months uh, after you were there, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And. Uh, I don't want to take up the time. Do you recall the same date appears on each of these pairs of shoes? I don't recall, sir. All right, then I'll let me. I'm sorry. One, two. Showing you 155. I think that's all right to show you. 155A. 155. C, 155E, 155G. You told us those are the four pairs of shoes that you collected on June 22nd, 2013. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And am I correct that they were all analyzed on November 25th, 2014, uh, more than 17 months later? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. That's all I have, Your Honor.
Uh, just briefly, on it. <clears throat> Were there other people from your unit who also participated in the um, uh, the execution of that search warrant on June twenty second? Yes. Okay. Many who people. else? Who else was with you from your unit? Um, my supervisor, Daniel Pratt. Um, from the crime scene response unit was present. And so when uh, Mr. Sultan asked you about that towel, that's not something you actually were dealing with, but you understood Mr. Pratt examined that, concluded that it was different, and therefore... Uh, I object to the leading, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Okay. Mr. Sult uh, Sultan had asked some questions about whether you had done anything with regard to the towel. Is that right? Yes. Did you? Um, other than visually observe it now. Okay. Did, um, yes or no, did you have a conversation with uh, Dan Pratt, your supervisor? Yes. And did you see him doing anything with the towel? Yes, he also visually observed the towel. Okay. And ultimately, who wrote the report uh, relating to the towel? I did. Okay. And that towel was, was or was not recovered? Was not. Okay. Now, when Mr. Sultan just showed you uh, these series of photos, that information, he had asked you about the dates, it also contained um, some initials. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. And an item number and a case number. Do you, um, do you recognize the initials? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, and it appears to SCB? Yes. And what do you, uh, who do you recognize those initials belong to? Stephen C. Bennett. Okay, and who is Stephen C. Bennett? Um, he, at the time, was the supervisor of the crime scene uh, unit, the troopers. Do you know how he was, um, in terms of his assignment, did he have any special duties as it related to footwear? Yes, sir. Okay, and just uh, tell us um, about um, his assignment to footwear. He uh, performed a footwear examination on those sneakers. And were you involved in any of that? I was not, sir. Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you. We're going to suspend uh, for, uh, lunch recess at this time. Just keep your mind suspended. Don't discuss the case among yourselves or with anyone else. Put all rise to the jury, please.